Hi, welcome back to how to write a platformer game in Java. Uh, in this video, we're going to talk about collision detection, which is uh, very important in the game because we need to figure out when sprite collides so we can resolve collision, pick up items, etc. Okay, so uh, so here it is. We have two sprites here. Uh, they are colliding, so we have collision here, whereas we don't have collision here. So we want to be able to uh, write a method that can detect that. So we, you remember that we wrote the sprite class a few videos ago, and we have all these variables, the width, the height, the center, uh, the velocity, and then displaying and updating the method. Uh, but we also need more accessor method to retrieve the, the left side of the sprite, the right side of the sprite, the top and the bottom. So we need these boundary of the sprite so that we can be able to detect collision. And so what we need to add is uh, the following methods. These are accessor methods, uh, get left, get right, get bottom, get top. And they'll just return the floats. And one thing I want to point out, I, I keep forgetting, is that uh, so by default, the position of an image is actually the top left corner of this of the image. And so we need to set the to make things easy. We're going to set the position of an image to be the center of the image. And so to do this, in setup, we need to make sure that there's an image mode, and then you put center in there. So that way, uh, this will set the position of a sprite uh, of an image be the center of the image and not the top left corner. Okay, so we need to figure out, uh, for example, one of the access method is get left. So we want to figure out what is the left boundary of the image. Well, we have a, a variable called center x. We have another variable called the width, w. And so we can take the center x and subtract half of the width. And so here's what the um, method would look like. This is, uh, this is in the sprite class. Uh, it's a get left, it's going to return a float. So it's going to take the center x of the sprite and then subtract width over 2. That will give you the, the left side of the sprite. And the same way we can find the, the right side, the bottom side, and the top side. Um, and then we also need mutator methods. Uh, set left, set right, set top, and set bottom. And the reason why we need these is because we need to maybe move the sprite so that the right side is equal to something. The, maybe we need to move it so that the left side is con uh, aligning with something else. Um, so I'll show you an example a little bit later. But so we need these methods so that we can modify the sprite, uh, so that we can align the sprite to a certain uh, position of the screen. So for example, if I have a collision of a sprite with a, a crate, for example, right? We want to fix this collision so that, for example, if the sprite is falling down, we don't want the sprite to go through the crate, and so we need to set the bottom of the sprite of the the player to be the top of the crate. And so we need the, the get top of the to get the top of the sprite. We also need to set the bottom of the sprite. So that's why we need these uh, accessors and mutator method. So for example, here's the code for this. Um, I need to take the player, the sprite player, set the bottom of the player to equal to the top of the crate. So crate.get top gives you the top of the crate, that line right there, and then we set that to be the bottom of the player. So that's a, a simple example of why we need these methods. And then, uh, so these mutators are very easy. Uh, again, it's similar, set left. I want to set the left side of the sprite to be equal to the, the new left. So here's the, my set left uh, mutator method. We, we, take, we, give a, we have a parameter called new left, so we want to set the sprite to be this new left. So that means we need to uh, make the center x of the sprite to equal to the new left plus width over 2. By doing this, then we set the sprite uh, at a position where the the left side of the sprite is the new left. Okay, in the same way we can do set right, set top, set bottom, etc. Okay, so let me kind of show you that. I'm not gonna write this out, but on the in the sprite class, I added in set left, get left, set right, get right, all those accessor mutators. So again, all those will help us uh, uh, do collisions. Okay, so let's talk about collision detection finally. Uh, so we need a, here's a method that's very useful. We're gonna write a method called check collision. That would take two sprite, uh, sprite S1 and S2, and it's going to return a boolean. And this boolean is true or false. It's true if the sprites collide, and it's false if the collide do not collide. And so there's a couple ways of doing this. I think the easiest way for us to understand this is to figure out when the sprites are not colliding. Um, okay, so let's uh, let's, let's see. The, the, there's four cases where this happened. Now the first case is uh, when let's look at uh, these two sprites. Uh, the first case is when you look at the right side of uh, S1 
and then the right side of S1 is less than the, the left side of uh, S2 and there's no way they're colliding uh, in fact we're gonna make it less than equal to uh, so even if it's aligning if it's exactly equal to we'll say that it's not uh, colliding uh, and, uh, and here's case 2 now on the other side of that is that if this if S1 is on the right side of, the, of S2 in other words if the left side of S1 is bigger than the um, the right side of S2 so then, then you can't collide either case 3 is uh, top and bottom uh, if the bottom uh, of S1 is is uh, uh, big bigger than the top of S2 or actually if the bottom of S1 is actually less than the top of S2 because remember the y-axis is actually inverted in processing so if this bottom is less than um, this top then they can't collide and finally if the top of S1 is uh, greater than um, or greater than or equal to uh, S2's bottom uh, then we'll also uh, don't have collision. So again, we're going to change all this to be uh, greater than or equal to. Okay, so all right, let's just see if we can write uh, these method in uh, our. So we're going to put this uh, below. I guess we'll just put it below draw here for now. So I need a. a well, we'll just do a boolean um, check collision. And we'll have a sprite S1 and a sprite S2. Okay, so uh, the way I'll do this, I'll say I'll check a, a boolean called uh, no x overlap. That means that it's not overlapping in the x direction, or in other words, uh, uh, horizontally it's not overlapping. So this is not going to overlap if S1 again dot uh, get right. If the right side of S1 is less than or equal to uh, the left side of S2, right? And we saw that in the picture. That's case one, right? If the, the right side of S1 is less than the left side of S2, then there's no way it's colliding. Or another case is, on the other side, is that if S1 uh, get left, if the left side of S1 uh, is greater than or equal to the, the right side of, uh, of S2. So this is the case one, case two that we saw in the in the slide, and then another case is gonna I'm gonna copy and paste this. Then the second case is when we have uh, well, no y overlap. So this is case uh, three and four. So when do we not have a, a overlap in the vertical direction? Well, if I look at the the bottom of S one, if the bottom of S one is less than or equal to uh, the top of S2, this is case 3, or if the uh, if the top of S1 is greater than or equal to uh, the bottom of S2, then we also do not have a, a, a overlap in the y direction. Okay, so, so now this is very easy. If um, no x overlap or no y overlap. If it's not uh, overlapping in either x or the y direction, then we just return false. And then else, otherwise, that means that that uh, both the direction does overlap, and we return true. So that's it. That's how we check to see if uh, the um, uh, if the sprites are uh, overlapping or colliding. Okay, let's move on. This is one more one more thing I want to show you, and that is. Um, we need another so we need a check for collision for sure. We also need another method called check collision list. This method is going to take one sprite and an array list of sprites, and uh, return an array list of sprite. And uh, th this uh, array list that we're returning is basically all the sprite in this list that collide with this sprite. So as a quick example, if I were to do something like a game that collect a tank that collect coins, we want the sprite here is the tank. The list of sprites is the coins, and we want to know which of these coins is colliding with the the tank, so we can pick them up. So, for example, it's possible that a tank can only can pick up one coin here, or maybe if it moves, it might at the same time pick up two coins together. So, a tank can collide with one coin, or maybe more than one coins. And so, we're returning the list of of uh, objects that that collide with this sprite. 
Uh, this also will be useful when we do things like this when we're shooting. Uh, having this method is useful because if we don't have this method, we might have to do a nested loop, right? We look at each of the bullet with each of the coins and see which of those collide. So that'd be two um, nested for loops. Or if I have this method, I can just look at one bullet and all of the coins together and see which of the coins collide with this bullet, and then do uh, and look at the second bullet and then all the coins together using this um, method and see which of the coins which of the coins will collide with this second bullet, and then go through the bullets. It makes it a little bit easier to to do collisions. Uh, and so that would be also a helpful method. So let's actually write that right now. This is very easy because we're going to call check collision that we just wrote. So this one is going to return uh, an array list of sprite. Um, so again, normally in, in Java we would write something like this, right? Public, right? But processing kind of makes it simpler by not doing uh, not doing that. But uh, it's the same thing. So we're going to return that. We're going to call this check uh, collision list, and we take a sprite and an array list of sprite and see which uh, which of those sprites collide with the given sprite so this is not too bad because we're gonna well first we're gonna have to create a new list um, called a collision list uh, and initially is empty and then we do a for loop for each sprite s uh, actually uh, uh, is called I don't know or something in list for each sprite in list. Uh, if we call check for collision, check collision that we just wrote just now. If check collision between uh, S and P is true, then we take this collision list and add um, as P to it. So if P, uh, one of the sprite in list, collide with S, then add P to collision list. Uh, and then outside the for loop, we just return uh, collision list. So this will return a list of sprites that collide with the S. So that's pretty simple, especially if we have a uh, check collision already. Yeah, though these two methods will be very useful when we do uh, actually all games, but especially the Mario game or the super or the platformer game. Um, yeah, great. So I think that's basically uh, what I have.